Hi, this is David Odell with Odell Complete Concrete. This is a part three of a. This is the third part of three part series. This is the uh, day after the pour, and uh, we're just doing the chalk line layout. Um, we're gonna do the 45 degree grid on the back patio. I already have uh, a wet tool jointed, the one foot band around the outside perimeter, as you can see there. And right now, I'm gonna do the layout and basically uh, what I do to get these layouts straight with the house is uh, I just establish a, a 90 degree off of the house and then I use that to uh, get my 45 degree angles off of that and what I'm doing is I'm starting all the uh, corners of these squares right against the house so all the intersecting uh, cuts at the corners will intersect right at the house then everything else just runs out into the band we're doing a four foot six inch grid pattern these squares will be four foot six inches and they'll just be on an angle to the house Hi, I'm David Odell, Odell Complete Concrete. Day eight on this job. This is the day after we poured the concrete. Here's your chalk uh, layout, chalk line layout, 45 degree angle, four and a half foot grid. You notice up here at the house, all of the uh, points of the squares intersect right at the house. That's how you know it's square, the whole layout square, when that happens. Then also, you can also check here. Uh, if this outside form wasn't square, then what you'd have is different size triangles right here. But they're all the same all the way down. So we're going to start cutting now. I'm going to go to the uh, GoPro for first person action on the actual cutting itself. So what you will need after you get your uh, all your chalk line snapped, you're going to need a, a good straight, straight edge to um, run your skill saw against with a diamond blade in there. That will cut the concrete. Then you also need something to slide the uh, skill saw on instead of just putting it on the um, fresh concrete. That's going to scratch it up and make it look uh, pretty bad for a while until it cures out. Then the scratches won't be noticeable, but it's best just to uh, run this on it so you have a nice, something that looks pretty decent right from the beginning. So here, here it is. This is what it looks like from the GoPro. So we got a pretty straight 2x4 here. And then I'm just using some uh, quarter inch masonite that's got some plastic wrapped around it. And that's always nice to run the skill saw on because there's uh, very little friction so it slides real easy on there. Now if it was on the concrete you're going to have to uh, struggle a little bit more pushing it. And you can cut these the next day um, because I put the fiber mesh in there so that holds the surface together. Um, so when I'm cutting it, you, normally you get a lot of spalling from the blade on the next day and chipping on the cut. But with the fiber mesh, that's going to hold it together and get some nice, clean, crisp cuts. If you do get a lot of spalling for some reason, like for instance if you didn't use fire mesh, you can always run a crack chaser through them and throw a little uh, 45 degree bevel through all the cuts, you know, just to clean it up a little bit. But I like to keep the cuts and joints as small as possible because then it doesn't hold a lot of dirt or water and both of those things contribute to uh, staining and, you know, basic erosion.
I'm cutting about a half inch, three quarters of an inch. And when you have a four foot spacing, a four foot six inch spacing, the chances of uh, you getting a crack in the concrete that's not in one of these lines is real remote. And that's the beauty of uh, doing cuts that are close together. You won't get any um, visible cracking. It's kind of the same concept as throwing pavers down. Pavers are, of course, made of concrete. And the reason they don't crack is because they're so small to begin with, it's impossible to crack them. So if you do that with poured in place concrete and you make smaller pieces, um, you're not gonna get visible cracking. Same concept, just a little bit bigger. This job turned out real nice. Uh, the water runs off really good, it runs right to the drains. So this backyard uh, won't flood again. Front yard drains well, drains to the front away from the house. Here's your side yard. Everything's draining really well through here. I threw a few cuts over here on the side yard as well. No drains in this little run, but uh, the water drains off fairly well. There's a couple little tiny bird bass there, but um, nothing that was set for longer than a few hours before it evaporated. Do a little final tune up on that sprinkler head there. It wasn't yeah, the sprinkler heads I use are fully adjustable from zero to three hundred and sixty degrees. So you can really work with them. Anyway, thank you for watching. Have a good day. Don't forget to subscribe to see upcoming new action.